in this final video where we uh, sort of wrap things up on a sample application, I'd like to work a little bit uh, on making the details uh, view a little more user friendly. So let's look at the details for Chef Antone's Cajun seasoning. And um, we'll see uh, on the details there are two things that I don't like. I don't like the supplier ID be being given here as the number two, nor do I like the category ID showing as two. Um, frankly, that is totally um, unusable from a user perspective. Uh, so I'm going to make two changes. Um, the first change is I'm going to substitute the category ID with the actual category description. And the second change is I'm going to add, uh, modify the supplier uh, so that the supplier's name shows up and also is, uh, provides us a link to the uh, supplier detail. So those are the two changes we'll see in this final uh, video. Now, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is make some changes right here. Um, I'm looking at the details view, details.aspx. Um, I'm going to go ahead and change this from category ID to simply category. And instead of showing uh, the model.category ID, I'm going to say model.category, which is actually a reference to the category, uh, associated category entity. And then I'm going to pull up uh, the category name. Uh, and that's all I need to do to make that change. So what we're going to see is the, uh, the model, which is the particular uh, product. Um, and we're going to see through its category um, link the category name. Now the supplier ID requires a little bit more work. So I'm going to first of all change the supplier ID to just supplier. Um, let's see, I'm just going to take this and comment it out just so that we can see it still there. And I'm going to add um, something else. Um, I'm going to add um, an HTML helper method that allows me to create essentially an action link. So I need to say uh, less than percent, uh, find it on my keyboard, equals, uh, no, less than percent, uh, equals, because I wanted to print something. And um, I want to go to the uh, HTML. And um, notice we're in, <laughs> we're in HTML, so it's actually type uh, case sensitive. Uh, so HTML dot, and uh, I want to create an action link right here. The action link requires, uh, in this case, the, the version I'm going to use, uh, three arguments. The first argument is the text that will show up on the page. And what I want is I want the, uh, the, the name of the supplier. So that comes from model um, dot, model dot um, supplier. So model dot supplier, and that's an object reference to the su associated supplier object, and I want the company name to show up. So that's what's going to be shown in the action link, the company name for this associated supplier. The next thing I have to specify is an action method in the product controller. And uh, I'm going to call my action method supplier, and I haven't added that yet, but I'll add that. And then the third thing I need to create and um, is I need to create an actual route. And so that's what it's looking here, route values. So I need to create a new anonymous uh, uh, class, an anonymous object. So I'll say new um, with, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, press return and hope it doesn't screw up. Um, and what I have to create here is um, model dot supplier ID model model dot supplier ID I was afraid that would happen when I hit that carriage return um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna undo that sorry uh, model dot model dot and see now it works fix that please Microsoft um, model dot uh, supplier ID Okay, and that wrapped automatically for me there. And, uh, and that takes care of that. Uh, no, it doesn't. I have my invisible squiggle here. See that invisible squiggle? Uh, you know, gosh darn, that's hard to see. So I have to close off my anonymous uh, uh, object here, and then I need to close off my paren for my action link. 
And I think I've got it fixed there. Okay, so there we go. So what's that going to do? That's going to um, put put on the uh, user interface the company name. Um, it's going to create a link. The link is going to include the supplier ID so we'll know who to look up. Um, and um, we look that up inside an action method in the um, product controller called supplier. So everything is about ready to go. Um, let's just run this now and see what we have. So here we have our list of products. Let's uh, go to uh, Chef Antone's uh, Cajun Seasoning. Check on the details. And here you see that the category is called Condiments. And we have uh, New Orleans Cajun Delights is the supplier. Um, I want you to look down here to the, ad, uh, the, the link bar down there. And notice that that is going to send me to the product controller. It's going to pass uh, or uh, cause the supplier action method to be executed. And it's going to uh, pass the supplier ID, which is equal to 2. Now, notice that it's not just ID down there. Um, it says supplier ID. So that's what I have to call it in my action method for the supplier. So um, we need to write that particular um, action method inside the product controller. So let's do that, and we should be all done. So here's my product controller. I want to create a new action method. So um, I have a function, uh, and it's called supplier. And um, it has um, supplier ID. Uh, supplier ID as an integer, integer, I N, I'll get it yet, as integer, and I think that's all I need to specify, I'm looking back up here, yeah, and I have to make it an action result, um, as an action result, action result, okay, and um, I'm going to use that supplier ID to look up the supplier. So I'm going to say um, um, dimension the supplier equals our context nw dot get supplier by ID. And I'm going to pass it the supplier ID. S-U-P-P. -P. I see I spelled it wrong. Um, Suppier ID. Okay, so supplier, I'll fix it there and I'll fix it there. I could rename it and fix it in both places. Okay, so that takes care of that. Now, um, I want to go ahead and then um, return a view. And the view is going to send the actual uh, supplier. So the supplier. Okay. And so I, I've, I've now created my own little um, action method without having it stubbed in by the system. Now, how do I create the view for this? Um, I'm, I'm inside the supplier, so I'm just going to right-click inside here. And I'm going to add a view. Notice it's uh, got that capability right inside there. So I'll say add a view. Um, it's already given it a name. The name corresponds to the name of the action method. And I want to create a strongly typed. And I want it to deal now with supplier, not with product. And the content is going to be a details content. So there's the details. And I click on Add. And it creates um, one for me. Here it is, a supplier ID, company name, contact name, and so on and so forth. I'm just going to leave it totally uh, um, unmodified. Let's go ahead and run the application. And <coughs> here we are. Let's look at the... Uh, the gumbo mix from Chef Anton. So click on details. And uh, again, that's being uh, supplied by the New Orleans Cajun Delights. When I click on that, that's going to go to the product controller and the supplier action method. So let's see if that works. There it is. And there's the uh, New Orleans Cajun Delights. So um, that gives you a sense for how you can put together an application. Uh, obviously, uh, there are a lot more complex things that you uh, can do. But the, the next uh, set of tutorials uh, in this particular um, series, I'm going to talk about how you can build a small little um, um, model 
to uh, record and display business rules. That'll be actually part of the um, the model itself, the database uh, model itself, as opposed to the way I did it in this example where I stuck an if statement inside um, one of the controllers.